Previously, we have discussed how to use tail set labels in order to label uh, factor type of strategies. And now let's move into the technique which is called matrix flag labeling. So matrix flag labeling was initially intro introduced in lay paper, which is called stock market trading rule discovery using technical charting heuristics. In the following paper, which was uh, written by Carvedio, uh, Guara, and Minchuk, which is called stock market trading rule based on pattern recognition, they exceed the initial idea of matrix, uh, matrix flags labeling by introducing various patterns which can be applied to label those type of data, data sets. So the matrix flag labeling method is meant to capture trends in financial prices data, such as bull and bear flags. A bull flag occurs when a stock price rapidly increases, followed by a downward trending consolidation period, followed by a breakout increase in price uh, confirming the original increase. As defined, a bull flag pattern is a horizontal or downward sloping flag of consolidation, followed by a sharp rise in the positive direction or the breakout. Being able to identify the early stages of the breakout uh, process can lead to profitable strategy of buying the breakout and then selling some number of days later when the price had theoretically stabilized again. So now let's take a look a little bit deeper in the matrix flag labeling method. So on the first step, we uh, take the data window, which consists of the current day price and the number of days preceding. The prices in data window are ranked and decile cutoffs are found. Each price is mapped to the corresponding decile. So basically what we do is we uh, bin our data into deciles and uh, code them based on the decile um, for which uh, price um, is included. The data window is split into 10 chronological buckets, each containing a tenth of the data window. Each data window bucket is converted to a column of 10 elements with the first bucket corresponding to the leftmost column, the second of the uh, second from left, and so on until the last bucket corresponds to the rightmost column. Each row in a column corresponds to decile or the entire data window with the top row corresponding to the top 90s or uh, uh, 800th percentile, second row corresponding to the 80s or 90s percentile, and so on. So let's take a look at the uh, method which was described on the previous slide and take a look at the real example. So here, as we can see, we have um, uh, defined a, a matrix uh, a pattern and uh, split it into the deciles. And, and also split it into 10 bucket windows. So here, now we can define a so-called bull flag template, meaning that here we can see the decrease in price followed by consolidation. And after that, um, uh, we have a price increase. So this is the original bull flag, bull flag template from Carvalho and Royal, which was uh, proposed by Lay. So the first column uh, first uh, seven columns represent consolidation, while final three columns represent the early stages of the breakout. So on the next step, the mapping, the mapping between, between price and decile or over the data window is applied, and each row consists of the proportion of points in the bucket which falls into each decile. For example, suppose the second bucket contains 50% of points in the 20 30 percentile and 50% points, 50 of points into zeros and tens percentile. The corresponding column will be from the top to bottom, uh, which corresponds to the array represented in the slide. And uh, this process is done for all 10 buckets until a 10 by 10, by 10 matrix is formed. So 10 by 10 matrix is the matrix which was represented on the previous slide. This 10 by 10 matrix is multiplied element-wise by the template. The sum of all elements of this resulting matrix is calculated by the total fit for the day. So for matrix flag labeling, you need to define a template for the breakout. There are several um, pre-generated templates which are uh, described in the paper, um, which we have uh, previously discussed. And, uh, but uh, the user can actually also specify their own template. If a threshold is given, the fit is converted to a categorical label which, uh, with the positive class given if the fit equals or exceeds the threshold and the negative class or otherwise. The value of the threshold depends on how strict of a classifier the user desires and the allowable values based on the template matrix.
So let's take a look at the bull flag template from Lay, which is applied to Microsoft data. So green dots here show uh, um, a period when the uh, when matrix flags labeling defined a bull flag breakout point. So as we can see here, we have various bull breakouts points which are for, followed by um, a slight consolidation, and after that, it goes uh, further. Uh, in the top uh, prices of levels. So let's take a look right now at uh, various functions which are used to, um, to implement metric flags labels. So here, as you can see, we have a class which is called matrix flag, flag labels. And it takes various um, inputs uh, to initialize. So the first one is, of course, prices, which are used to label the data set. Second parameter is window. So these are the preceding window, which is used to uh, estimate and label our data set. And the third one is template name. So there are several pre-generated uh, templates uh, from the papers. So we have lay bear template, lay bull flag template, core value bear and and core value, uh, uh, core value uh, bull template. So here you can choose one of the templates which you would like to apply based on your needs. The second uh, uh, function we have here is a uh, method of uh, matrix flex labels, which is called apply labeling matrix with a threshold. So as we have discussed previously, the user can either spec specify a threshold, and in this case, by using this threshold, we can convert our labels into um, a classification setting labels, or if the threshold is none, it will just return the raw values. But what the user can also actually do if, uh, uh, he has um, own type of template he would like to in matrix flags, flags label uh, matrix flags labeling the user can specify the template so by specifying the pd data frame of 10 by 10 you can actually set up your own uh, template which you would like to uh, capture in your labeling process and use it by matrix flags labeling function so here, let's take a look at a small example of using um, metric flags labeling. So here we use Microsoft stock starting from 2020, take the close prices. We initialize the label uh, bull flag template with a window of 60 and use prices of uh, Microsoft, Microsoft stock. After that, we apply the labeling matrix and we get categorical labels based on whether the date's weight is above 2.5. As we have discussed previously, you can pl play around with threshold based on how strict you would like to be uh, in order to detect patterns. By increasing the threshold, your labeling flag um, uh, method will detect less patterns. And by decreasing the threshold, it will detect more patterns, but uh, also can be noisy. So after that, we get the categorical labels based on whether the date weight is above 2.5. And after that, we can uh, plot these this labels and generate the plot from the presentation. The final labeling method, which we'll discuss in the, as a part of this lecture series, is, is called return versus a benchmark. So this is partially one of the ways we can apply uh, factor investing by trying to understand how a stock outperforms its, its benchmark. So for example, uh, we can uh, understand if the stock uh, outperforms S&P 500 index and take, for example, uh, long, in long uh, stocks which massively outperform the index and short stocks which underperformed uh, the index. So the labeling versus benchmark is featured in the paper uh, called Evaluating Multiple Classifiers for Stock Price Prediction by Bollings, uh, by Bollings in 2015. So in this paper, the authors label yearly forward stock returns against a predetermined benchmark and use that label data to compare the performance of several machine learning algorithms in predicting long-term price movements. Labeling against benchmark is a simple method of labeling financial data in which time-indexed returns are labeled according to whether they exceed a set value. So instead of using a raw return, we rather use the difference between the return of the benchmark and uh, the security. 
the benchmark can be either a constant value, so for example, uh, your risk free rate, or append a series of values which uh, with an index matching that of the returns. So as we have discussed, uh, your benchmark can be a stock index or bond index or your own uh, constructed benchmark. The labels can be the numerical value of how much each observation's returns exceed the benchmark or the sign of the excess. So if you want to go into classification setting, you can use the sign of difference between the stock uh, returns and benchmark returns. And if this uh, difference is positive, the label value will uh, equal to uh, one. And if the um, difference is negative, it will be minus one. So this kind of labeling can be used to set up the strategy, which, for example, um, takes long position in, in outperformers and, for example, shorts the indexes itself. On the right hand side, you can see the plot of returns of Microsoft compared to return of SLP 500. And with green dots, we see the periods when uh, Microsoft outperformed SLP 500. And as you can see here, there are some negative returns which are colored by green because in that period of time, Microsoft uh, generated uh, a higher return compared to S&P 500, meaning that the stock price decreased, but it decreased not that much as the index decreased. So let's take a look at the function signature uh, in ML Finlab documentation to get a better understanding of how it is applied on practice. So at a given time t, the price of stock, uh, of stock uh, versus benchmark is calculated at the standard return. And that's how we used the return of benchmark uh, function. So here we need to pass the prices of your security. The benchmark can be either a fixed value or a pending series. Binary means if false, labels are given by the numerical value of return over the benchmark. So we have a regression setting. If true, labels are given according to the sign of the excess return. Resample by means that we, we can also resample our data based on business day, week, or month to get more midterm and long term labeling periods. And the final um, parameter is lag. So if true, the returns will be lag to make them forward looking. Because the original function returned over the benchmark generates labels values only for current day, but as we would like to predict if the price of the security will outperform uh, the benchmark or uh, underperform, we would like to lag them by a number of uh, days or data points. So in this lecture series, we have discussed uh, why fixed time labeling, time labeling uh, is not that good to label financial data, uh, financial time series, and how triple barrier labeling applied to label not only site but also in meta labeling setting. We have discussed how to apply trans scanning labels to label train type of strategies. We have also discussed how to apply tail set labels for factor type of strategies. And uh, on the final, uh, and in, in the final part of the lecture, we have discussed how metrics uh, flags labels and tail sets labels um, applied on practice.